I think it's more of a, a problem in the United States than it is other places. I mean, there's some places where science is less of an issue and there's other places where faith is less of an issue. But in the United States, it's very nicely juxtaposed. And I think it's actually a very good dynamic. I, I think if I were, what, what I would, I think part of the problem is there's a tendency to focus on the extremes. Um, it's, it, it makes for good press and for book sales and so forth. And I think there's a lot more need for meeting in the middle, which is finding ways that you can, um, if you really don't know something, just admit you don't know something. If you don't know for sure that you can't rule out an intelligent designer, then teach it in schools. Um, what, what's, if, you, if science is so fragile that they can't teach um, exactly how you would um, question things and, and discover things, then I think uh, we need to work on that, make it much less fragile. So um, I think it's a, it could become a healthy dialogue. Right now it's not healthy because of focusing on the extremes and not trying really hard to um, get people engaged. I mean, pe people should be engaged in it more than just uh, a gut reaction. They should actually want to, if, even if there is an intelligent uh, design agenda, that should be deeply informed about science, about technology, about how you actually answer questions. I think that, that a lot of what we have are a set of accidents and uh, there is design in the world and uh, there will be lots of design going forward and it's an opportunity to uh, to embrace both the natural and the synthetic. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of what's natural is painful and a lot of what's synthetic is not completely thought out um, but offers an alternative and I, and I, my worldview is that it's that dynamic between design and past and future and um, the parts of nature that we like and the parts of nature which for one reason or other because of say population explosion is still natural but it's aberrant, it's pathological from our human viewpoint and we need to uh, embrace ecology in a very intelligent way and this requires that our politicians and, and regular folks know a great deal more about um, ecology and their world and their, and their personal diversity um, than they currently know. I think that both science and religion science has very definite faith components and most religions don't stick to faith. They venture out into making predictions about our physical world. They don't just say there's something that is completely unconnected to us. They say actually it affects our lives. And when they do that, they merge. They, they, they ha there's a, we know that, our, that, the part of, that our, there is a connection between our feelings and our brain. Our brain is a scientific, uh, something that we can study scientifically. So I think there's, they can and should coexist. There's a lot of faith that's expressed by scientists about science. Um, it's kind of an act of faith that science is a good thing. We don't know that for sure. We won't know that. We may not know that millions of years from now. We may, so, uh, and by good thing, we can even, even phrasing goodness in a scientific context like survival of the species would be something that probably um, scientists would agree is a good thing. We won't know whether science is a good thing for the survival of species rather than having um, entirely face-based. So I think these things are, they are, they are solvable, they are addressable. We can bring them together, but it requires less extreme views um, or would benefit from less extreme views.